If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, Mind Pump, Sal, Justin, and I, we get into some conversations. We have some fun. We have great conversations, Adam, <laughs> in the beginning. Hijack Sal. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's the better? first thing that we cover is the possible health benefits of urine. Love that urine. Find out if you should drink your pee. More nugget bombs from over here, everybody. Right. Pee and sprinkles. Then yeah. we move over into Uber's self-driving car fatality. Finally, Uber's killing people. Are the, <laughs> the machines Finally. are attacking. Right? Yeah. And then, of course, we, we go and mention our sponsor, Health IQ. Listen, if you're going to die... Make sure you guys cover your family, right? Get insured. Get insured. You can go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump. Make sure you guys fill out the quiz. Find out how good this insurance Take is. Take care you. of your family, for goodness sakes. Right. Don't you love right? them? Yeah. Or, or live forever. Show them you love them. Right. And then we move over into Facebook's data scandal. Find out what, what information Facebook is giving away. Scandaloso. Oh. Oh. And then Justin dropped some uh, knowledge on the platypus, right? The duckbill platypus <laughs> and the milk and its uh, pro- possible antibiotic properties. That's yeah, it. Man. Right? That's it. Gotta milk those platypi. Love that puss milk. <laughs> is it platypi? <laughs> Platypussies? <laughs> I don't know. Well, something like that. Yeah. And speaking of pussies, then we move over into male birth control pill, right? Yeah. So <laughs> that is a great transition, Adam. Yeah. Oh. You want to stop getting people pregnant? Take yeah. the new male oh. birth control. I'll, pill. I'll hand it back over to Sal. I just wanted to hijack his Thank intro. You. That Thank was you, amazing. Adam. That was really good, yeah. actually. Yeah, I did a good job. You almost did it. Did you right. Did right. Uh-huh. Uh, then we get into the questions. The first question was. There was a study that I brought up on Insta Story, on my Insta Story, that shows how artificial sweeteners can contribute to fat gain and insulin resistance. Now, what do we think? Do we think that sugar is better than artificial sweetener, or should you stick to artificial sweeteners instead of sugar? If you had to pick one, which one would you pick? By the way, we also talk about Organifi in this. Organifi, of course, the makers of the extremely popular gold juice, anti-inflammatory, nice, relaxing, delicious gold juice you can find at OrganifiShop.com. By the way, enter the code MINDPUMP, you'll get a fat discount. The next question was, besides slow negatives and unilateral work, what are some tips and techniques that we have that can teach you how to improve your mind-to-muscle connection? That's when you connect to your muscles through the power of of your mind. Connection, action. <laughs> the next question was, do you prime your whole body before a workout or focus on what you're going to train first and then prime the next section of your body before you continue training? How does priming work? Why is it so important? And why don't you own Maps Prime yet, you moron? Go yeah, to right. mindpumpmedia.com. I Optimus Prime. Maps yeah. Prime, especially if you're a personal trainer. It's get a the money prime. back guarantee. Get the Prime bundle. And finally, the last question, what are the biggest misconceptions that fans have about us that aren't true. For example, Adam has a big penis. A lot of people think that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's we know the, that to be false. We did not get into that. Lots, yeah. of, <laughs> lots of misconceptions. Yeah. Misconceptions. You're going to pop out a bunch of people that are this, waiting for that. Oh, in, the, yeah. in this episode. Also, look, this month, uh, you can get access to our forum, our private forum. It's exclusive. Adam, Justin, and I are on there all the time. we got lots of really smart people on there. Well, guess what? If you go to mindpumpmedia.com right now, there's a way you can get in there for free. Here's what you do. Enroll in a MAPS bundle. Now, bundles are several MAPS programs combined together based on your goal. If you're really serious and really want into fitness or if you're a personal trainer, you want lots of great information, enroll in the MAPS super bundle. That's one year of exercise programming. That's several MAPS programs put together, discounted like 30% off. If you just have specific goals, let me help you out. If you want to build maximum muscle and strength, MAPS Anabolic, get that program. If you want functional athletic performance, well, then you should get MAPS Performance. If you want to be a stage presentation athlete like a bodybuilder, physique competitor, bikini competitor, or you just want to sculpt and shape your physique, that's MAPS Aesthetic. Yeah. Or if you want to work out without equipment at home or on the road, that's MAPS Anywhere. And finally, if you want to learn how to correct imbalances, 
promote better movement or you're a personal trainer and you want a tool, a tool that you can use on your clients that's going to pay you back dividends, well, that's the MAPS Prime bundle. Get all of that or any of that at mindpumpmedia.com. I, ah, damn it, Doug. Listen, uh, literally, we just revealed. He so, gets one a year. That's his, He got one last year. It, this is his it, one. Yeah. That's a lot. Now you, it's the beginning of the year, Doug. That's a lot of pressure to go the rest of the way. Can, we, can we call these the Dugigans? No, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't no, work. Yeah. Try it again. Do, Doligans? The, uh, like a mulligan? Doug yeah, it's Opalypse. like a mulligan. What's it? Wait, a Capocalypse Doug. Doug Apocalypse. It's apocalypse? It's not that bad. Whoa. Know, it's, it's more like a mulligan. No, I'm just saying, Just, yeah. Justin's on the right track there. It's just yeah, like, it's a give hiccup. Him, we give him a few, you know what I mean? It's a dug up. Yeah. He dug up. He yeah. dug up. We're gonna we're gonna redrum this energy. No. Duh. So what happened was he says, "Oh, guys, we're on." So we start talking. I literally reveal the secret to fat loss. Erased. <laughs> Can I, I can't share it again. Okay. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Don't even that, remember. That one's yeah. too hard to recreate. It came out. It can't come back. Now you gotta tell the so, audience your your piss story. Oh my god! All right, I'll share. I'll share it again. Uh, so I could. I go to the bathroom and the, the the landlord, the guy that you know owns the building or whatever, nice guy. Mm. He's a cool, yeah, yeah. cool guy. <laughs> On cue. So, uh, so yeah. he, he, he's, I don't know this, but he's in the hallway in front of the door of the bathroom. So he could kind of see me and he's waiting for me well, to finish. L- let's just describe our bathroom. <laughs> just like, it's always open. Like, yeah. any, like how awkward is that when you're in there taking a dump or, or peeing or whatever? It's like, you feel so exposed to the world. Yeah. They can see your feet. Yeah, for sure. It's like, come on. So, and you can tell too. I don't know if you guys ever noticed when you watch someone's feet when they're pooping. If they are flat footed and then they go up on their toes a little bit, they're wiping. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's the stop, wipe. dude. I didn't want to think. Do about you that. actually watch this? <laughs> well, think about it because <laughs> they're raised. So, well, yeah. some people, or maybe they were just pushing harder. No, some people, yeah. some people wipe while they're while they're, while they're still seated. I so think it's. I think they're, you, they're putting one you toe see up an L, in there. Uh, uh, yeah. An yeah, up and L or L, up and pivot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the up yeah. and it's pivot. A, it's an up yeah, and yeah. turn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Because you have to expose the the, the, the the cheek and hole area. Anyway, right. Anyway, uh, that's not part of the story. So I'm in there peeing. So he sees my back. The door's open because whatever, I'm peeing. Who cares? And I pee, you know, pull my pants up, turn around to walk out without washing my hands. Sorry. Uh, ever since years ago. By the way, <laughs> I learned this from Adam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you wash ahead of time. This is a true story. I don't want to get a dirty Years day. ago. Yeah, it was when we first started. In mind. old school mind pump days, Adam... Went to the bathroom and walked out, didn't wash his hands. So I called him out on the show. I'm like, dude, you don't wash your hands when you take a pee? Yeah. He's like, no. He goes, my dick is clean. He goes, I wash my hands before I pee. And then I was like, yeah. <laughs> mind blown. I was like, yeah. whoa. I think like, we've all applied that sense. Yeah. When, when Adam died, if you die before me, Adam, I'm going to say that. At your, I'm going to be like, Adam taught me something. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most brilliant piece of knowledge blew my ever mind. passed on. So anyway, I didn't wash my hands after I peed because, like Adam said, Dick is clean. It's in my pants. Not doing anything, right? At least not now. So I turn around and I see the landlord. So I go to shake his hand. Like, hey, what's up, man? And he reaches out to shake my hand. And as his hand's coming towards me, I could tell it's registering his head. Like, this guy didn't wash his hands. So his (laughs) hand, as he's coming out, it curls and bends into a stump. So like wow. he hides his hand. Well, he stumped you. And he points. He like, he, but he doesn't stop the shake. He just yeah. he just curls his wrist like somebody who's having a <laughs> terrible seizure, right? <laughs> right. And he does. So I just grab his little stump <laughs> and I walk. <laughs> and I walk in here. Makes like for the You're most like, awkward exchange. Most ever. awkward thing ever. I think it's more awkward for him than you, though. I think it's yeah. okay. You know what I'm saying? So I was telling somebody this the other day yeah. that they, I got caught doing. Every time I get caught and there's somebody that calls me out, I explain to him like, oh my. My dick's the cleanest part of my body. Why would I wash my hands after I touch that? That makes no sense to me. That's right. You don't yeah. wash your hands every time you have to touch your face. Your face is dirtier than yeah, your, yeah. Your, your hands are after you touch your clean yeah. dick. And you have right. a dirty face. Well, and they go, wait, well, what if yeah. what if you shake and it yeah, drips you on do. you? Well, I'm not disgusting. I wash my hands then, asshole. But yeah. 90% of the time, I'm I'm out. Good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. I don't but know. But even yeah. to take it a step further, it, and we're just speaking objective science now, okay? So I'm not saying this is what I do, uh-huh. but this is objective science. <clears throat> Unless you have a urinary tract infection, pee is sterile. It's right. void mm. of people drink it. Bacteria. So even if you were to pee on yourself. Wow, okay. what happened, Justin? I I just know that. People drink their own pee? Yeah, man. Why? It's I think there's some wacky people out there that have ideas that it's like healthy. To drink. To, to drink your own pee. Well, I, I didn't. Isn't there something to do with the if you get stung by a jellyfish, you're supposed to we piss should, on we yourself? Should look yeah. that up, Doug. It, it, it's like I know you're supposed to piss on yourself if you get stung. Well, by Well, I know that. Yeah, I right? know that. Yeah. But I don't know yeah. about because it's clean water. It, it, it's a sterile. That's what it is, right? Or is there something special in urine 
that fights the stings. Dude, you're the science guy. Justin and I just work here. <sighs> Listen, I don't, know. I don't pee on I just know stings. like I only hippie do ideas, and this is one of those hippie ideas I saw on like some taboo like show mm. where they're they're showing some people's <laughs> habits and they justify well, it. As, I, like, I, I, I saw on uh, what's it called? What's the what's the man where he does the oh the, the survival so, guy? Yes, yes, yes. What's his name? Fuck, I don't know. You know who it is? No, I don't. Bear Grylls. Yes, oh, Bear Grylls. I saw Bear Grylls drink his piss. Yeah. Because he had well, to. Well, he had to. He was right. like, yes, yeah, survive. It's called urotherapy. Thank you. See? Yeah. It's an alternative therapy said to cure everything from cancer to acne. <laughs> See? <laughs> cancer to acne. I'm telling you. They like they make all these wacky claims. It, um, these are the same people that will enema just for everything. You know, like, yeah, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> like, this is I like, got a cold. This I'm is a, like when a, 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 my ass. This is like when a collection of like three old retired doctors get together and they're like, hey, let's, <laughs> I have some hella funny. Let's put this out. Yeah. We'll back it up with a little bit of science and shit yeah. like that. We'll get this whole- doesn't work. <laughs> let's do the breathitarian thing. I think I mean, it's just, a, I think it's just a fucking joke. No, I think what it is, no, is people do this shit. You know, what's funny. I'm going to look into this. And Doug, if you shopping for vacuums again? Yeah, no. It's ads are coming up. If, if, um, if I find any science supporting this, it's going to be hilarious, right? Yeah. Here's what I think it is. This is what I think, okay? So I'm going to use another story to illustrate what's happening here with people drinking their own pee, or at least promoting that you drink your own pee. Okay. So there's documentaries that are out there <laughs> that really try hard to sell you on the on, on the supposed fact, it's not, it's false, mm. that eating animal meat is so bad for you that you need to be vegan. Now- that's false. Now, the reason why that's promoted is because there's an ulterior motive. It's people who want to save animals. They don't want anybody to eat animals. So they make up a story and says, animal protein's bad for you. Right. Okay? Here's what's happening with this. There's a lot of people like golden showers. And I think what they're trying to do is close <laughs> other people to oh, drink I their see. pee. I see. Like, oh, it's you... good for you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. So you think that's who's the one to put the story out? I think that's who's making oh, up. Oh, my God. Who's making up the story. Did you hear, speaking of stories, did you guys hear about the uh, little Uber incident the other day? Somebody yes. got first person. We don't know the details. Well, we know a per- Yeah, we know that somebody got hit by a car. Well, uh, we don't know if it was the pedestrian's fault. It doesn't matter. It was inevitable, right? It was inevitable at one uh, point this would happen. Well, we this knew there'd be casualties. This was like right, two days ago, way. right? <clears throat> yeah. Just so two Arizona. days ago, two days ago, a self-driving Uber killed someone. We don't know the details. Do you know what else happened two days ago? What? Millions of people were hit by cars. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. Okay. With, so With other people so driving. So it's all relaxed. Wait a minute. Is it's it all really relaxed. millions? How many? How many? Not uh, worldwide, I don't think it's millions, but it's definitely more than one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, bet, I bet you at that exact moment, something like a thousand people got hit by cars by people too, you know? Right, yeah. right. So that's everybody needs to fucking relax, okay? A shark could have just ate somebody. Yeah, yeah. everybody calm That down. was my response to everybody that sent it to me. They're like, oh, check this out. Look what happened. I'm like, well, I, I mean, I thought that was inevitable. It was going to happen. As soon as we started testing these things, it was gonna, <laughs> someone was eventually going to get hit. I mean, yeah, come on. It's... We have idiots that hit each other that are driving their own vehicles. I it's, will say this. If you're, woo, I didn't even think of this. If because there's people that are out there that literally try to get hit oh, I'm sure. by cars so they can collect insurance money or sue a rich person, dude. Fuck me, Uber's rich as hell. Yeah, you can't tell me there aren't going to be people like, oh no, I fell. Uh, You've right seen that on those those cams, you yep. know, on the dashboard cam, yep. you see people just jump into cars. Well, I th- see. I think it's I, fucking no, crazy. No doubt when they do these automated vehicles in the future, whether the, the the current models have it or not, but for sure when they they have to think about that liability reason. So there will be cameras everywhere. around everywhere yeah. on that car. Totally. And if some asshole jumps out of a out of a side or cross crosswalk and jumps in the car, <laughs> you're just gonna look like an asshole. You know what oh. You get a broken leg and they're and in court yeah. they're like, uh sorry sir, that doesn't, yeah. that push doesn't their, they push their kid out. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Uh. Oh. Oh man! Two that birds, one stone. Terrible idea. It's uh, <clears throat> yeah, no. There's people that actually do that. They actually let like try to get hurt, which I think is just it's mind boggling. You're a slime ball. Yeah. Did I ever tell you when I saw that happen in the grocery store? No. So, so I was at the grocery store. I was young too. I was thinking I was like 14, and there was a sign that said like, uh, what is slippery it when wet? Yeah, it said in Spanish "piso mojado" or something like that. I don't, know. I don't know, hope I'm saying it right. Anyway. This lady. It sounded like a burrito order you it, just did. It, it did. I don't yeah. think that was. It's slippery when it's not wet. delicious. What is it? What am I? What am I trying to say? I'm gonna look it up. And make sure I'm right. But anyway, the lady walked by, <clears throat> and she saw the sign. She walked back around, walked by again, and had the fakest fall I've ever seen in my life. Oh like, yeah. You ever see a comedian? She'd be like, oh yeah. She like <laughs> she like 
and all like slow and awkward. No, and, no, uh, she she basically like squatted down and then like fell like back. Leaned to the side. Yeah, and I remember yeah. telling my mom, I'm like, like that what? lady didn't fall <laughs> unless she passed out slowly. She literally stopped and she like sat down and like, uh, uh, like yeah. legs up and hands yeah, yeah, up yeah, in yeah. the air. Oh yeah. God. You know what I wish? That's I wish awkward. I wish that with somebody right there, there's your see, told you. Piso Siesta Mojado. Yeah, you're close. Yeah, I don't know. That's I said you're, piso you're real mojado. close. I was right, dude. Everybody calm down. Hey, I'm f- I know Spanish. I manage the 24 fitness. Because you got one of the words. Yeah. Piso. <laughs> so, yeah. so, I'm on it. So, yeah, she. I wish, like, uh, you know, people think karma means, like, you get what, you know, what's coming at. That's not how karma works. But I wish it was. I wish someone who pretended to fall fell down for real the next day and hurt themselves. That'd be cool. That's mm. fucked up, bro. Why? <laughs> Don't you think You're that'd be cool? That what do you there. know? What? How do we know it's not like some? That's like your. Th- this is their last resort, right? Like this is the primal instinct oh, to man, survive. Oh man, me feel bad. <laughs> 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 they have kids to feed. Right, they have yeah, kids yeah. to feed. They have everything. They're like, you know what? I'm going to sacrifice you know my own body to get some money for my kids, and I'm yeah. going down. At least yeah. they're going have a good down life. today. Speaking, yeah. Save Mart. Speaking of your children, uh, we're supposed to do a mention here for Health IQ. Uh, good idea to get. Uh, life insurance if you have kids. Yeah, in case you try to do one of these spills and you right. fucking go down. Don't go that route. Yeah. Right. Go you, this route. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's get uh, Don't insured. Leave, leave, leave your funny with your your money. Uh, your family, excuse me, <laughs> with money and not with bills. Right. If you die. Yeah. 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 And if yeah. you're gonna, if you're going to attempt one of these uh, slippery when wet caution signs and falling and then hurting yourself, make sure you got your life insurance Damn. first. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Although, yeah, we don't condone that. No, right. not at all, man. Have so you guys anyway. been getting? I haven't got anybody that's taken the test lately to see how they've done. We, when we first did that, the very first Health IQ commercial, we kind of put it out there, and there was a ton. There was of, a few people that that surpassed, you know, the numbers you guys were were putting. Oh, our were. numbers? Yeah. yeah, I wasn't trying. I think. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think they studied like that. I made it realistic that's so people could pass. So people Doug, could pass Doug it. beat us too. <laughs> Yeah, as if it was too high, you know, that would just be a deterrent. You know what it is? Can I tell you what happened? What? The questions I got wrong. Sal copied Health me. IQ got them wrong. <laughs> He's copying I got them right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's actually, I got 100%. Health IQ is the one that got 97%. <laughs> yeah, said, oh, yeah. Their, their, their test is almost you gotta 100% fix your, accurate. You got to fix your fitness information. <laughs> Health IQ. Just kidding. Dude. No, I don't remember what it was. It was Did you guys see what happened with Facebook? Thirty-six billion dollar fucking hit. What? Oh. Yeah. What, what was that all about? So they have this. Uh, I think some of their shit was mined, right? I think that's what the the, the verbiage they oh, use. Oh. So uh, I pe- know the story. Oh, you do know that you do. Yeah. Oh, really? This just happened, right? Yeah. So it's. I'm going to read it to you guys because there's there's a lot of info on this. Facebook stock took a beating yesterday, falling nearly seven percent, which was a it's a thirty-six billion dollar hit. Market cap following fifty million user da- uh, a fifty million user data scandal. So supposedly somebody, some company was mining out this information so they can use this for like their political agenda and marketing reasons. And so mm. uh, that information got, now it not only did Facebook take a hit, but then Google shares went down four percent, Amazon went down two point four, and Apple dropped trust in the system. So what happened was there's this company. Uh, UK-based company that does... Uh, the Cambridge Analytical. Yeah, and yes. they do political um, campaigns for people. Right, PSYOPs. Yeah, and they said that... And they, the way they sold themselves... And they helped Ted Cruz get elected and someone else, right? So mm-hmm. they were effective. And what they said is, hey, we got this special sauce where we can figure out the psychology of the people you're trying to sway and we can advertise to them better. And by the way, this is not new. This is fucking politics, okay? Right. I just Let me just be clear. <laughs> The last presidential election surpassed a billion dollars to get, uh, you know, either Trump or Hillary elected. So that's a lot of fucking money in a short period of time. So don't think for a second that they're not spending at least hundreds of millions of dollars, if not most of that money, on figuring out how to convince people to vote for their person in all ways possible. So they've been... Politics is a great way to understand human psychology. If you see the way politicians talk to people and whatever, mm-hmm. that's all planned and structured, and because they understand human human psychology, because there's a, a market for it for them, right? So anyway, this company, what they did was, is they created this app that you downloaded on Facebook. Now, when you got the app through Facebook, through the app, they got all your information. They were able to get all your Facebook information, your likes, your friends, your whatever which is against Facebook policy. You're not supposed to be able to do that. So face, they Facebook found out apparently, this is the story right now, and this company said, 
oh, we didn't know that we did it or, or that we didn't know that this was wrong. Okay. We're gonna, we deleted every, all of it and we're not using it. We didn't use it. We deleted it all. It doesn't even matter now. Evidence they, they, have coming, the, they have the information. So evidence is coming out that they didn't delete it all and they use it all. <laughs> no so shit. really, it's not, that it's, it's not that it's shady in the sense that this is what they've been doing forever. It's shady in the sense that they... Uh, they they went they went around Facebook's policy or, like, or they broke Facebook's policy, and were able to easily do it and mine all this information. Now here's what you need to know, and this is why it's scary. This is why I, I have a thing with Facebook. It is voluntary, so mm-hmm. you are voluntarily doing your own shit and stuff like so. It's not forced, and I get that. But if Facebook were a country, first and foremost, would be the, one of the most populous countries in the world. They have over how many billion users do they have now. It's- a few. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's over a billion for sure, so right? Yeah, I think two, it's over maybe. two. Yeah. So it's one of the most populous countries in the world. And by far, nobody comes close. Not any space, no spy agency in the world has as much information. Not as, the CAA, as, as the Facebook KGB, no, not no. the Chinese communist government. 2.2. 2. No, but 2.2 billion. Nobody in, nobody in the world is as informed in detail as Facebook is of their population. So of their 2.2 billion people, they know more about you than anybody by far. And it's all voluntary. It's all by what you read, how long you read, what you click, what you like, what you post. What you share. All what that you stuff. share. <clears throat> everything. So that being said, if another company can go in there or the government can go in there, that's a lot of power to know how to fuck with you. It's a lot of power. Well, it's less about fucking, and it's what it is is they now know how to market specifically to these people, right? Like, so they know their hot buttons. Like, if you're somebody who reads all these 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 papers that are on a specific topic, I know that's a hot spot for you, and I, so they can now they can start to spotlight these specific groups of people that they want to market and target a certain way to influence them towards their campaign and or to sell you something. I mean, that's what we're seeing right now. I mean, it blows my mind the way stuff follows you around now, like with all the social media platforms. Like if you've liked something on Instagram and on Facebook and on the the reason why it was engineered, it's like it's silly to me that people think it was like the infrastructure of it was just for user interaction. You know, like, oh, cool. Like, this is where I can talk <laughs> to my friends. Thank you, Facebook, for creating uh, such a know, cool platform uh, for me. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to so use this information right. at all? Like, <laughs> yeah, right, dude. It's uh, Of course, like, they're getting all your likes. They're getting all your interactions. They're getting people that are loosely affiliated with, you know, that network. That It's just like this inner tangled sort of like connection like they're getting every single data point they possibly could that's why it's so powerful like over even google google just gets search terms they get like they don't have nearly as much not even close dude this is on a personal level so it's it is very interesting to see where Facebook goes because it's like, you know, was the NSA was already tapping into this shit, you know, for since day one. Yeah, I know and everybody's pissed off that you know, some politicians had information to sway. There's no force, by the way, but what? to sway users. Nobody's angry that the NSA steals this shit all the time and has the power to throw your ass in jail forever. Right. So. I'm, in, I'm interested to see what's going to happen when, like right now, it's kind of the wild, wild west with Facebook and, and everybody that used to do um, like Google words and shit in the past have now moved over to Facebook because the, the um, you know, cents per click what it's costing. It's yeah. so much cheaper and it's oh, more accurate. Oh, it took all that business. Oh, they just, Google oh, AdWords. they swooped it up real quick. So what I'm wondering is when it becomes the most dominant platform for marketing and advertising, like what are we going to see prices look like? I mean, what it, I to mean, advertise think on about, that? think about it. It's going to be more powerful than, uh, you know, uh, advertising on the Super Bowl. Yeah. You know, the Super Bowl is so amazing because you have X amount of people that are watching that on on television that day. But guess what? But Based- all you know about all those people is that they like to watch football. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So you market chips, beer, this in hopes well, that and it's habitual. So you know when they're actually gonna be on Facebook. You know what I mean? Versus Google, it's like it's random, like you're randomly looking for some shit. It's like they know that, like as many times as you look on it, and what time of day you look on it, like all that shit. I think it's going to become so specific. Like, let's use our 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 um, our business for example. Like, let's say over the course of the the, the next couple of years, we now have five years 
of data on our, our own clientele, our own customer base, and we see exactly what the, you know, 80% of what the age group is, the things that they're into, the things they don't like, everything from their, their political stances to their open-mindedness to the, what the way they, they actually, wake up in the morning. Yeah, everything. Yeah. And that we've we've honed in on that. Like, we know our, our avatar so well. Then we can mm-hmm. go to Facebook and say, okay, find us all these, ex- I mean, fitting it to yeah, a these, these are the oh, pr- yeah. These are the people that tend Brilliant to buy this for- thing. You know, create that or whatever. Yeah, and then poof. that's exactly what it does. Yeah, that's so. Uh, so, do you guys remember the movie Ex Machina? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great yeah, movie. Was, was awesome right, movie. and that movie's about this AI uh, robot that is superhuman like and extremely intelligent. Yeah, and incredible movie. Right, great twist at the end. But there's a part where the guy figures out that this robot is like this robot's kind of like he's he's developing this connection with this female robot. And he realized that in order to create the, the the body and face for this robot, for him to be so strongly attracted to her, that they mined this guy's porn searches and they knew exactly mm-hmm. the kind of girl yeah. that he'd be most attracted be to. Hooked. And he got pissed off. He's like, fuck, you were like looking through. And I was thinking about that. I'm like, you know what? Of course they're doing that. Dude, think about that. Do you know how long do you know how long the CIA fuck during the Gold War Cold War? You know, the CIA and KGB would always try to fuck with other people through mm-hmm. prostitutes and stuff mm-hmm. all the time. Oh, yeah. And for sure, they try to pick the right perfect girl. Bro, that's what, remember when I was talking about them sex Most dolls? The spies. The yeah, sex dolls the other day? Chicks, how yeah. crazy they look? Imagine this. Imagine if you could take all my data of every, like, you know. Everything it, you like. What she was built like, what she was shaped like, what her face looked like, her hair, everything. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you have to take this. Uh, this uh, all of them combined, like built into a sex machine, and then it's advertising. But then know what your pers- and then it's popping up in your feed. Fast forward, you know, when technology gets really good, they can also make the personality exactly that you know the kind of personality. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. You, yeah, you have all this dangerous. information of the stuff that you're reading I'm that you're you, like that you're gonna, into, and she's going to be humans all aren't in the gonna same have stuff. sex with each other. They're uh. not going to humans are not going to bang each other anymore. Yeah, that's what's going to happen in the future. Uh, either that, or we just we do it for reproduction reasons only. No, yeah. you you're have not going to have sex to well, do even it. then. They'll just harvest it. Yeah, you'll yeah, bang yeah. the robot. Yeah, you bang uh, the robot. It'll that, like, have this little. Tube. Oh, it'll be it'll be built it'll in a little tube, and it's like it's like a sperm deposit. You know what I mean? Then you sell it, and then yeah, either that or the robot itself stores it's like milking you deposits it to an artificial womb yeah. and then babies grow in the womb and then people just live live this life of ah, just, oh wow yeah creepy that's even yeah. more it's gonna be creepy that's even more weird than the matrix you imagine that like <laughs> yeah. some you know some woman's at home with her husband and she's like ah it's like yeah you, you're an you asshole smell. yeah right? what the fuck yeah. you know and then she can't where's wait my home. ken doll yeah she yeah. can't wait it seems home. like it would be one of those things that I, I think a lot of people would adopt and love it at first, but then it reminds me of the story you just recently told of the you know the heaven and hell of like getting everything you want right, having this robot who has all the things you like, but then there's no adversity. She there's never, no flaws, right? There's no flaws. She yeah. never talks back. There's never an issue. Maybe they program her too, right? Maybe they program her to be a little you know fucking a little feisty. Yeah, like hey, you're watching too much TV over there. <laughs> Slaps you <every laughs> like you then. bitch. I wish I had a Kill transition you. for this, but um, <laughs> I don't. It's you guys are familiar with platypus. The, uh, the animal, the animal, yeah. yeah. You know how strange. weird that thing is. Very strange. There's your transition right there. Yeah, we're gotta, talking weird shit. So the, this is really weird, right? So <laughs> he's all speaking of puss. Yeah. <laughs> have you guys heard <laughs> speaking of puss? <laughs> yeah. That would have been a money. Add a little transi- platypus. That would have been a money transition. <laughs> to the mix. Damn, I missed out on that one. Uh, so it like lays eggs, and it also uh, creates milk, which. You know, so it's like got like these mammal characteristics to it, but also like lays eggs, right? So mm-hmm. it's it, it's very interesting. So they they actually are finding that this might like the the bacteria, the antibacterial properties that uh, the milk produces, like they might actually be able to use that. Uh, you know, uh, as far as like getting advancements from that, like from so like using, antibiotics. Yeah, for like antibiotics. Platypus milk. Platypus milk. What is so great. unique about that again? Because because it has. Well, what's unique about the animal is it's, it seems to be like there's different a weird, animals combined. Yeah, there's a weird kind of a, a protein that they found this like unique like protein that's like all spiraled uh, that um, has very unique characteristics and properties to it that they're studying right now. It's so, an Australian animal. They have all yeah. the weird animals in Australia, by the way. It's like yeah, so they're Big like spiders. of course something weird out of this. It, you know, they're, they're so they're, anyway they're studying the milk right now to find. You know, new ways to approach antibiotics. Have we found anything yet? I mean, is there any like any uh, prom- they, anything? They prom- said that there's promising leads, yeah, in that direction. But it's just weird. Wow, I'm reading it right now. Science alert: 
Uh, the milk of Australia's weirdest animal could help us fight antibiotic antibiotic <coughs> resistance. Mm-hmm. So apparently, there's something in there, their milk that's got antimicrobial protection that they're trying to look at and say, okay, why is this so effective against bacteria, and how come bacteria haven't evolved to overcome it? Interesting. Yeah. Platypus milk. You know, that's the worst. That, that could be the Can worst thing that happens to that? platypus. Ugh. Yeah, poor, poor platypus. What if it's all good, dude? I don't know. Maybe it is. Uh, probably is. It doesn't even sweet. have teats. I don't, know if I, I don't know if I've ever seen one before. I'm trying to think if I've seen one at a zoo before. Have you guys seen one before? In a, a platypus? Yeah. Uh, I think I saw one at... Uh, is there a difference between... Is there is it a duck-billed platypus and then a platypus or the same <sighs> thing? Um, That's a good question. I think they're the same. Are yeah. they? That's a good question. I, don't know. I have no idea. Oh, look how cute they are when they're little. You know? What the fuck? <laughs> you see that squirrel the, with a cat face? <laughs> that's a Photoshop, Adam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, did you see get that? Photoshop. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah pla- um, at least. You know, antibiotic resistance is scary. Yeah. I don't think people realize that, and this is by sci- scientists are calling this a potential catastrophic it's a big problem in, in epi- looming problem like, like a catastrophic epidemic what yeah. is say that again what? antibiotic resistance, resistance. oh yeah because uh, of how much i mean when did it get really popular and 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 when did we really start taking them like crazy uh i mean we've been taking them for like crazy for, for decades ever. now yeah. that's what i mean when that's what i'm asking well you, Do you know um, like is it fucking 20 years ago 40 years so, ago 60, um, it wasn't more than 50 years ago penicillin that. was when was penicillin penicillin mm-hmm. uh invented 1940 40s something yeah. Uh, maybe Doug can find out. Yeah. So we've been using antibiotics for decades, for a long time. Which that actually, that's not a long time. It's not a very long time to see how the, all the adverse effects. I think we're just now starting to see a lot of the bullshit from it. That was my point of asking you that. If it's something that's only been around Let's since see. oh 1928. Ooh, 1928. Yeah, we're off. Yeah, so, uh, but antibiotics, I think it was just an inject. That's when he discovered it. Uh, when it was turned into actual medicine, might have been a little bit later, but nonetheless. Oh, yeah, you're right, Sal. 1942. 1942, the first patent. Boom, bitch. Oh, yeah. You thought I was wrong for a second. Here's a, <laughs> I believed in you. Here's the thing. Bacteria evolve very quickly. So you're right. It's not a long time. But for bacteria, that's enough time. Bacteria evolve fast because they multiply. So, so the faster that something can multiply and die, theoretically, <laughs> the faster it can, it can mutate or it can evolve. And so, and so think about it this way. You have uh, an antibiotic that kills most of a bacteria because when you when you take an antibiotic, it doesn't kill all the bacteria. It kills most of it, and then your and your your immune system tends to do the rest. But those bacteria that survive are the stronger ones. They reproduce, and so on and so forth. So over the course of decades, antibiotics we've had to phase some out and, and introduce new ones and new methods because bacteria just stop responding to them. Now we're running out of. Uh, antibiotics. We're literally running out of antibiotics where we have no answers. People are dying right now of staph infections that we have no, we have no... Because the antibiotics are, don't work. So nothing. Not, yeah, nothing not that we responding. have. Responding. Yeah. Nothing that we have works. So you're in the hospital, you got fucking staph infection, they have to cut your leg off because they're like, we can't... That's crazy. Yeah, we can't kill it. Or if it travels up into... Now, your, is that just for some cases or is this in general? What do you mean? And... uh for, like so, not all staph infections are turning into an amputee, right? No, some some uh, strains, some types, um, <clears throat> some types of. Is it more the type of the infection, or is it more that this person has already taken so much antibiotics? It's for not the, the person; it's just the, the bacteria now. Uh-huh. So, and we're seeing this much, you know, more and more and more, and this is the result of us just over, uh, just overusing antibiotics in our food, in our feed, in our animals, and so this. And people don't talk about this. When we talk about like, oh, how is the human race going to end? Asteroid, nuclear war. This is up there. Yeah. Maybe not end, but you want to talk about like Like a- a super virus or something coming through. Well, not a virus. Not the bacteria. Yeah, like the bubonic plague killed fully one third of the known world or or the world that was infected. One third. Imagine that. Imagine right now of everybody you know, one third of them dead because of an infection. Well- you know, we could be headed down that path if we don't figure this out. And so, what they're doing is they're looking at all these natural antimicrobial, uh, you know, compounds. One of them, you like what you said, Justin, which I didn't know was platypus milk. Another one is cannabinoids. Hmm. Yeah, there's there there cannabinoids have been shown to be effective, and I can't remember which one. It might be might be cannabichromine. I'm not sure which cannabinoid, but it's one of the cannabinoids found in in, in uh, marijuana. 
one of them has been shown to be um, effective against uh, antibiotic resistant staph. Hmm. Right. So this could be this could be a huge thing. That's great. Yeah. One what, of the reasons one of the reasons why I invested in marijuana stocks back in yeah. the day. What was I remember a while back uh, there was some article about cockroach milk. What was that? Like the properties. Just I thought that was a protein. joke. Okay. <laughs> you like, brought that one to the table, I think, didn't you? Did, no, no, I don't no, think so. I think, I, think think about, I think you said something about milk and a cockroach. I could have sworn. Well, you. yeah, after because I thought it was ridiculous, yeah. but it was actually <laughs> a real, a real uh, article. Science brings us good stuff. It's you know, here's another bizarre. thing. Here's another thing. Science is bringing us in 2018. A male birth control pill oh has shown promise in early human trials. Good, because I don't want. I don't want to. How does that work? I don't want to do that. How do you think it works, dude? Let's just let's just take a. a can you guys take take a guess? It like without kill, killing it your kills, boner? No, it, no, it doesn't kill the boner, but it kills the sperm. I'm sure before it even leaves you. Uh, well, it's a, it's a pill that would make your body stop making sperm, right? Uh, yeah. What makes you stop making sperm? So am I gonna shoot? Am I gonna shoot blanks? The, My testosterone lower go testosterone. That you, you you stop your body's production of sperm and testosterone. That's a stupid. Why would idea. you ever want to so, do that? Well. This is the fucking this is the male everybody's like oh my god it's a new discovery no it's not bitch we know for a long time you take testosterone you stop making sperm so the pill is a testosterone and progestin pill they call dimethandrolone dimethandrolone sounds like a cool steroid right Adam? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> sounds like some, some that. sounds like hardcore some t-ball right yeah. there yeah. so people taking this it's suppressed uh, their uh, oh and of course some of the side effects include uh, you know increased mood and sex drive. Duh! You're giving them steroids, you dumb shits. Oh, yeah. So they're they're not producing uh, sperms anymore. Um, and the study was a month long, which is not. We need a longer one than that. What do you guys think about that? What do you think about a male? So just give people steroids. So I mean, I like the idea if we could come up with with something that didn't require us actually going in and snipping away at us. I I think that would be cool. But I I can't imagine what you would do without either one killing it or stopping the production of testosterone. So. I would. I have no idea. Maybe something you could take that would neutralize it. Maybe I don't know. You know, here's. I don't know how that would work. Here's the thing: women have been taking birth control for a long time, right? right. Um, in 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 masses since the, at least since the seventies, probably since the sixties, right? And it's part of the sexual, you know, revolution. It's part of the women's movement. Um, it liberated women from the, you know, I hate to say burden because it, it's not a burden, but it can be, right? of the responsibility of bearing a child. And it changed things a lot. It gave women a lot of power over their own bodies because before that, if they got pregnant, it was like, my God, it was it could really be just their problem, especially if the guy decides to fuck off or whatever. So, but what we don't, like birth control is hormones. And when you take hormones, first off, hormones are signals in your body. Whenever a, a hormones tell your body to do certain things. So you're taking hormones which means you're sending a signal to your body and your body adapts to that hormone by reducing or changing its production of its, of, of its own hormones. So when women go off birth control, and more and more people are talking about this. This was a little taboo to say a years ago because it was so tightly tangled with the, with the, the <coughs> feminist movement that if you said, hey, taking birth control might be bad for you, you'd get hammered mm. because they were like, fuck you, I'm going to take it, whatever. But the reality is, first off, you should have it. It's your choice. It's your body. Do whatever you want to it. But number two, birth control fucks with your hormones. You go off birth control, talk, you could talk to lots of women. Yeah. Many of them, it takes a long time to get back to normal. Some of them never do. Right. Most of them do, but some of them never do. And there are and there are risks associated with birth control because it's a hormone. Same thing with men. You give men testosterone. Fuck, man. If you're if you're taking if men are taking if they're gonna take this, think about it this way. When do uh, girls start taking birth control? Typically, sixteen years old. Yeah, or like eighteen, years or like old. 18, 19, 20, Right. Well, I don't know. About That's that. probably the average. I don't know, Doug. Maybe most, you can look most up. girls in high school probably start. Can you look up average control? age that uh, women take birth control? Start taking birth control. My guess would be I'm sixteen. Sure, he's younger now. Sixteen, seventeen. I don't think like that's the before. average. I think the average is probably higher. But there are a lot of girls sixteen, oh, seventeen. I want to say at least eighteen, but yeah. So let's say you're a, fine. Say so let's say eighteen, right? Let's say a bunch of guys. Let's say men now are they have this option take a birth control pill because they're having sex. So all these guys are going to take. Pills that shut or lower their testosterone so that they don't make sperm just what we from need. the age of eighteen. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen when they go off that pill when they're they want to start a family and they're twenty seven or thirty years old? Like, okay, I'm oh, going to go off birth control work. now. Yeah. Your body's not going to make testosterone again. Yeah. yeah. Or you're going to be you're going to have a year of depression. 
What are they saying though? Are they are they saying that it's a safer bet that for it hasn't that? passed all the trials yet? Um, yeah, I mean, there's always side effects to these things. It's totally up to you. Of course, a side effect of unprotected sex is pregnancy for some people too. That, so, you know, that could that could end up pretty terribly. I think for somebody. Yeah. Um, so we just need like a little. Uh, I just think people like need- a little a little cap that goes on the head instead of that full like full <laughs> con. It's a little cap that so, hugs it really well and then it has the a little shower cap. Yeah, like yeah. a little shower cap. Just a little one. Just, just right over it. Yeah, so so and you it has, feel it on the rest of it. Right. And it has yeah. like the spermicide so as soon as it hits it it's killed no matter what. And then it's just like right on its little smile. That, Dude, won't, that, that technology is... <laughs> yes, that's, I agree you with you, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> your, your smiles? Yeah, it smiles. Yours that's does weird. it? Huh? Bruno! Mine's yeah. angry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. sometimes. He's got teeth. I can make it talk. He's got little teeth. Justin. He's all pissed off. No, it's... uh. You know what? I mean, maybe I'm getting old, but fuck, man. Just teach you got to teach kids to be a little bit responsible. I don't know. Yeah. Pull out, be responsible. Pull out. Yeah, but now it's like work on them or don't have sex. Yeah. You know, unless you. I don't want any more kids, kids, and so now I'm like, I, I guess I, my old, the only thing I can do is go get it snipped. Yeah, or just pull out. You don't do the pull out method, dude. I don't trust that method. It's a. You know what? I what? trust the method. I don't like it though. There's I, nothing worse. I feel uncertain. About I, that I've method. always thought my buddies that are like you that do that. I, I think it's so weird to me because the best part of the orgasm yeah. is being inside when you have that. You're cutting yourself short. Yeah. If you do the pull out method consistently and you're good at it, yeah, it's safe. It's totally. actually pretty good. Sure, it can be totally it's safe. Not bad. You know, it's not I, bad. I think it can. You'll be. still get an STD. So <laughs> yes. you gotta, you know, I don't want to, I want to oh, make sure yeah. I give the right you get advice for that. <laughs> yeah, I, go, I don't yeah. want some kid to listen to this, you know, South said pull out. Oh yeah. God, bird, save us, please. Today's Quah is being brought to you by Chimera Coffee. It's the only coffee that is infused with all natural nootropics for a cleaner, calmer, and more focused buzz without the crash. Click the Chimera link at mindpumpmedia.com and input the discount code MINDPUMP at checkout for 10% off. It's the motherfucking Quah. The eagle has landed. Quee First question is from Martuz Brela. Based on the study Sal brought up on his Insta story, do you think that sugar could actually be less detrimental than artificial sweeteners, including aspartame and sucralose? Do you think consuming sugar in moderation could be a better choice than artificial sweeteners for performance, health, and mental You pick this question. Oh. Let me, you know, this is a perfect opportunity for me to address something I've been wanting to address anyways. Okay. This same question, that ex- word word for word was sent to me in my, my DM. Oh, well? Yeah, and I already answered it. So- my, I, I want to answer this for our audience, oh, yeah. but I also want to tell our audience right now, it's inevitable at one point, uh, it'll be impossible for uh, the three of us boys to be able to answer every single DM. Right now, we, we take a lot of pride on making an effort to do that and push really hard. What makes it harder is when somebody copies and pastes a question and they send it to all three of us plus they do on the qua because we're all trying to we're trying to answer every single one of them so that's a question that now two other questions could have been answered from somebody else because you've you've sent it to all three of us so Mm -hmm. just as a courtesy i would appreciate Mm. when you guys send questions qua is always the first place like that is sandbagging right right it's just not i mean it's it's kind of fucked up when you think about it when you when it's really hard for us to get to as many questions as it is and then if you do that all of us read those things so you You've now done, you've now took up time of Justin. You've took up time of Sal. You took up time of me. And then on top of this, right and here, now you've taken up time on the podcast. Right, right. So like, I mean, just be be mindful of that that's all I ask people. I know I know probably people do that and don't even think about <laughs> think about. There's probably fucking hundreds of other people that are trying to do the same thing too. Mm-hmm. So and then, so this question I didn't even know you picked yeah, this question. That like, I, I, really, I recognize this question too. Well, so, like yeah, I fucking yeah, literally yeah. answered this question. It's yeah, what you say. It's verbatim. No, absolutely. Sugars a, a, natural sugar is going to be the better route 100% of the time. But even then you got to be careful because that will sneak up on you too. Like it doesn't take, uh, what, what's it? What's a tablespoon of sugar amount to like makes the medicine go down. <laughs> Right. Sorry, all right, Mary Poppins. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody knows what that is on the podcast. I guarantee, just... except for my forty-year-old like, chitty, friends. Chitty chitty bang bang. <laughs> That's right. Right. Like, right, what, right. What the right. hell are you talking about? Yeah. But uh, you know, so it's the all the stuff that came out on artificial sweeteners. It used to be sold to us that it's a it's a healthier alternative for somebody who's trying to lose weight it's a great way for them to have something that's calorie free or lower calories cuz it's artificially sweetened but i'll tell you something right now those things are addicting as fuck 
I find myself more addicted to artificial sweeteners than I ever felt to real sugar. And it's just because they've they've made it super hyper palatable and it's like 20 or 200 times more powerful and strong as sugar is. So to your brain, it sends off this like it's like uh, what would be better sweet. What would be better for you to have one or two cups of coffee or snorting a line of cocaine? It's like Dang. it's that strong in comparison to regular sugar and so you're way better off having real sugar <laughs> artificial and- sweeteners are like cocaine i did that post you remember i did that post <laughs> yeah. like two years ago with a little baby oh off. yeah man the baby snorting the line of cocaine oh my god i forgot you did that you yes. busted that <laughs> Hell early in my pump days. Yeah, I was always doing edgy shit to catch attention. It was like a little baby, and there was like a there was a mirror and fucking cocaine in front of it. (laughs) Listen, quit. I I attached some study to it about Uh, about artificial sweeteners. Somebody got mad. They're like, "Why don't you stop the baby instead of taking a picture of him doing drugs?" Adam, (laughs) what kind of a person are you? Watches a baby do cocaine. Dare you? Want to see what would happen? You know, here's the thing. Uh, I hate questions like this. I hate the which is better. Both suck questions like hey what would you rather get kicked in the face or punched in the face like well here's the thing uh context matters with with a question like this and what i mean by that is let's say uh the biggest health issue you have is being overweight that's the biggest health detriment to you and cutting or switching to artificial sweeteners means you're going to cut you know 400 calories of sugar out of your diet Therefore, you'll lose weight. And and, and can it promote weight loss in that way? Yeah, it can. The side effect of that being better health because now you've lost weight, does that mean that the artificial sweetener was better than the sugar? In that context, perhaps. Perhaps it does mean that. Um, what What if that doesn't make that big of a difference? What if instead of choosing either or, you do neither? You know, I mean, we kind of are in this situation where people want their cake and they want to eat it too. So they're like, hey, I want all the effects of this super harmful whatever without any of the harmful you know whatever and it's like it's it doesn't always work that way you know avoid sugar you avoid the calories but now you're taking in artificial sweeteners and we know that artificial sweeteners don't really affect the microbiome very well we know that they could prop they could produce or promote internal gut inflammation which down the road might not be a good idea we know that artificial sweeteners also uh, promote fat storage and uh, you know uh, uh, epigenetic changes in your gut, which may later on the line down the line make you less healthy. We know some of that stuff. It's a little bit more controversial to say that, but the science is starting to come out more and more in, in support of that. For me personally, I don't consume products that are highly processed, that are sweet very often at all anyway. So when I do, which is rare, but when I do, I'll pick the sugar one. Right. Just because it's not that often anyway. You know what I mean? If I had it every single day and I was really overweight, yeah, that would be done. I yeah. could see a benefit that maybe artificial sweeteners might be better. But again, context matters. And you know, here's the thing when it comes to, you know, I, I was I did an interview this morning, and one of the questions the guy asked me was, what one food like sets you off in, in, into this the frenzy of eating? And I used to understand that, but now it's a little bit different. Now the way I understand it is, you know, when you say to yourself, um, when there's something that you crave and then you say to yourself, like, I can't have that, you know, I can't have those gummy bears. I can't eat those. In reality, first off, you can obviously eat those. Nobody's forcing you, but you, and what you're doing is you've, you're acting like a child who another version of yourself is telling you can't do something, so you feel like you're being forced, and so you say something like, I can't. The reality is you don't want to eat those gummy bears. In fact, you don't want to eat them so bad that you created this dual side of yourself that is going to tell you what to do, and you're going to be the child that has to obey, and eventually you rebel and you give in. And this is why when you start eating it, you're like, yay, I'm giving it, I'm rebelling, and then you go nuts and you, and you do a frenzy. For me personally, if I'm gonna, if I eat something, it's because I wanted to. It's not any. It's no longer this. Oh my God, I can't control myself. I understand now that I either want to or I don't. Now that doesn't mean I don't identify the fact that it tastes good, that I'm gonna enjoy eating it, that it's gonna be fun to eat. I know all that, but in spite of all that, at that moment, I still say to myself, Yeah, I know it's gonna taste good. I like the taste of it, but I don't want to eat it, so I don't. Or sometimes maybe it's worth it, and I say I do want to eat it, and I do. When when you get when you start to understand that you start to you start to eat these kinds of foods less and less or at least 
they have less power over you, or at least they mm-hmm. cause less stress. And then you don't have to come up with this like alternative, like either or. Yeah, either or. It's just sometimes I eat it because I want to, because the, the circumstances are right, and then I'll choose the real shit. Yeah, which re- is sugar. Really, it just has no weight. You know, like I th- feel like this conversation with like artificial sugar or sugar and this about like to me, it just has no real relevance in my diet. Like it's something that I'm like, yeah, I, I ate, you know, some cookies or whatever. it's like, I'm not, I'm not condemning myself for eating some cookies or I'm not, you know, like fixated on that. Like, it's just, it's not something I, I focus on, you know, that therefore it's not appealing and it's. Uh, I just feel like if you're in that state of mind where you're battling whether or not one's good versus the other, it already uh, that that's something that you need to kind of internalize and, and deal with, and and you know figure out why that's such an important part of your diet and why that's like incorporated in your lifestyle so frequently. Well, I can tell you all the people that I coach that for sure sugar is the number one culprit that I have to like teach people to to pull back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially since a lot of people don't know. It's in everything, too. Exactly. A lot of people don't realize that a lot of the foods that you consume that you would not think have sugar in it have sugar in it. Mm -hmm. So you get, you know, all of a sudden your your daily. And I think I think I want to say that the basic RDA for uh, sugar is around 25, uh, 25 grams, somewhere around. I don't remember what what the average is or whatever, but roughly that. And. It is rare that I would evaluate somebody's diet. And what I always do with people is I tell them, don't change your eating habits. Don't try and impress me. Just eat for a week normal and track it so I can kind of see your habits and what you do. And when I do that, it's every time, at least 90% of the time, uh, the, the people are over either over consuming sugar by double <laughs> or quadruple or more of what they should be having in a day. Mm-hmm. So we are grossly over-consuming just sugar in general, whether it's yeah. fucking fake or real. We over-consume sugar big fucking time. Especially, Especially because from liquids. And, and most people are, are just sedentary. Yeah. Right. Like, I could see some sugar consumption if you're active, and you burn it right, off. Right, if and you're a 17-year-old boy or girl who's playing sports and you're outside yeah, and a you lot. you have fruit and stuff like that yeah. or whatever, go for it. Right, so there's an example. So you all, somebody having a serving or two of fruit a day already hits like their daily intake yeah. for sugar. Yeah, it's like, that's okay, it. done. Like yeah. that, that's all you, you should have. And so that means everything else in your diet should be eliminated from sugar because that is the best source of sugar, I would say, is to get it through fruit because you're getting the benefits of the fiber with it. So... I, I think that everybody needs to to evaluate their sugar intake and then scale back on it. But the you know which is which is worse for you the artificial sweeteners. I mean, there, I think there's a this there's is a, this is this is a big thing in uh, in supplements because many of the supplements that you take promise to give you some kind of a um, uh, like an like an effect, right? Like a pre workout. Okay, it's going to be stimulant based. You're gonna you're gonna get this hyper feeling. There's stuff in there that's supposed to increase the pump, which is like largely bullshit, but whatever. That's what they're telling you. So you you have to take this powder, but it's also got to taste good, right? Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, people don't like taking things unless they taste good. So then they need to flavor it. However, because you're into fitness, well, that would be stupid for us to give you a thing with 40 grams of sugar in it. That's a pre-workout. Plus, you probably feel, ter- feel terrible. So they got to create something that tastes good. It doesn't have sugar. So supplements use a shit ton of artificial sweeteners. They're the most artificially sweetened category of food, if you could call a lot of the supplements the food, that you'll find. Everything from bars to, to, to powders. And that's because people take, like if you take a protein powder, you don't want, if you take a protein powder, you're not trying to get carbs. You're not trying to get you know sugar. Now, the way I look at it is this. If you're taking a supplement, there's a reason why you're taking a supplement. There's a purpose the purpose isn't to have a tasty meal or a tasty snack. It's just me. That's just the way I, I, I understand it. If I'm taking a pre-workout, it's because I want an effect from it. It's not because I want to taste something good. If I want to taste something good before my workout, I just get some, you know, Hawaiian punch or some, you know, high C or whatever and drink it and I'm, I'm fucking done with it. But no, the reality is why am I drinking a pre-workout? I want to get hyped. Cool. That's the real reason. Not to make it, not to have this delicious tasty drink. So Isn't that ironic though? That, but that's how we market That's it how too. we sell it. Right. Yeah. 100% the reason why 
extend branched-chain amino acids, the reason why the most popular pre-workouts are the most popular, the reason why the most protein, the popular protein powder is the most popular, is because they taste the best. 100%, that's on the top of the list. If you look at all the money that's spent on protein powders, the vast majority of it goes towards making it palatable. Mm-hmm. Very little goes into making a quality protein powder supplement. This is a fact. Yeah. This is a 100% fact. I know because I have friends in the industry and I know what sells and what doesn't sell. And you need to make, if you make a protein powder, it has to taste really fucking good or you can forget about it. I don't care what's in it or how awesome the protein is. has to taste good. Now, I was always like, look, I got to a point when I took supplements where I'm like, man, I just want- <laughs> I'll Plug my nose and, you know, Yeah, I just want the best. Down. I'm taking protein because I want protein. I want the best protein. I want this other stuff. So I would take the one that I thought was best and however it tasted was whatever. I just had to deal with it. So now that all being said- Supplement companies have gotten pretty good with the non-artificial route. Organifi, for example, like plant proteins never taste as good as the as the the whey protein or dairy protein. They just don't. Dairy proteins just taste better, right? Organifi is the first like plant protein that I would say is pretty close or on the level of a lot of the whey proteins that I've had. It's actually pretty good. So they did do a really, really good job with their taste, and which is one of the reasons why I think they're successful, but they also spend a lot of money and time on their quality and they have nothing in there that's artificial. And if you are one of these people that consumes supplements on an everyday basis, which a lot of our listeners do, then you're you're probably better off going the not artificial route. You're better because it's just so much. You know what I mean? If it's every yeah. once in a while, fine, whatever. But if it's, you know, five days a week or every workout or whatever. Go the go go the non artificial route because what we know about artificial sweeteners that's coming out is it's not really the best thing for you. Next question is from Scott Capri Sun. Besides <laughs> slow negative Ooh, like that drink and unilateral work, what are some tips techniques to improve mind muscle connection? Mind muscle connection that's a very important thing to have. What is that? Well, I guess I can uh, let me see if I can explain it simply. It's the ability to fully extend and fully contract a given muscle that you pick that you that you choose you want to flex. So motor unit recruitment. Yeah. So so bodybuilders will say or control a muscle through its full range of motion. Yeah. That's another way to say it. Yeah. So like if I'm gonna if I want to like do a pull down, and I don't have a good mind muscle connection, I can still pull it down. I'm still gonna activate the muscles that are doing it. But if I have a really good mind muscle connection, let's say with my lats. I might even be able to pull the bar down without activating too many other muscles, mm-hmm. or at least weakly activating. You can it. like compartmentalize it that way. Yes, and yeah. bodybuilders are incredible. Yeah, they're they're at this. probably well, the best of this. This is where, and this is why I am a big fan of uh, isolation exercises. You know, we for it's a, a great role, right? For a, a, a majority of this podcast early on, I think we kind of poo pooed on a lot of isolation exercises, be- just because I think a majority of people. Uh, are missing the big compound lifts. And I think we all agree that most people will benefit the most from incorporating more of these types of lifts. But man, some of the best I ever felt as far as being connected to my body, being able to develop muscle, no aches and pains was when I was bodybuilding, when I when yeah. I was doing all these isolation exercises that were these small movements where you're focusing on just a, you know a couple muscles, a small muscle group and trying to contract and move it so there's a lot and i think uh i think this person already noted what unilateral work so i think unilateral work is incredible for this well it's interesting you guys bring up the bodybuilding angle but even still like now even going through the frc like they completely have the the beginning of it is to understand uh, isolation first, isolating each individual joint. And so they make a point of that is like, that's where they build off of that. And so that's that, that you understand how to articulate and control the joints, you know, in the function that they're supposed to produce. And so it's very important. It's very important to establish that first. And then we start building off of that and, 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 and get into the compound lifts. So God, you just, you, you actually just said something that really was kind of mind blowing right there. Was that maybe it's, it's in our best interest to to learn to isolate each muscle or joint like you're saying and control control the joint through its full range of motion through isolation type exercises before moving to compound lifts right because um, you're you're well, right think about what you did as a trainer i'm sure you did this yeah, you we saw all did someone that. yeah you did that like you saw you had a lady and she's trying to do a, a standing squat and you can tell 
oh, your hips aren't firing the way they should. What's the next thing you do? Right. Mm-hmm. You go right. and you, you have her prime her hips or whatever, right. fire her, her, her glute muscles so that they can activate more as she does a squat. Um, the, the reason why bodybuilders are so good at this, by the way, is your ability to fully contract and activate a muscle is very strongly connected to your ability to develop it. So if you have a poor connection to a muscle and it's not really doing everything that it can, then it'll be very difficult to develop that muscle. So you'll find yourself doing barbell squats and let's say you have a poor connection to your quads, which is rare, but let's just say you do. You're doing barbell squats and you're just developing glutes and hamstrings. Or you're doing a bench press and instead of your chest getting developed, you're developing your your delts and your triceps because you don't have a good connection uh, to that muscle and your recruitment pattern then follows that and you develop this pattern now where you're using less of that muscle you don't develop it. So here's a couple interesting things. We had a great podcast with uh, Pekulski, Ben Pekulski. Ben, ben is a huge advocate uh, of this. He's a huge advocate and it might be, I mean, for bodybuilding it makes sense. Now you can go too far on this direction and make that about everything because there is lots of benefit to be able to use all your well, muscles, obviously. I, like I was saying back to my bodybuilding days was you know, I was in I was in some of the best aesthetic shape. I had um, the least amount of pain, but then I didn't have the greatest range of motion and mobility and uh, functionality. Yeah, yeah, functional. Yeah, I wasn't very functional, even though I I looked cool and I felt good. So there's definitely a give and take to every every modality. Yeah, there is. So yeah. So what he said, which I thought was fascinating. Is first of all, he said there are no weak body parts. I'm like, what are you talking about? Of course, I have a weak body part. He says, no. If you can develop. And one muscle really well, you can develop all your muscles that well. So I partially disagree in the sense that I do think that there's muscle fiber density and in, in, in shape and stuff like that that is genetic mm. that will help dictate whether or not a muscle develops as much. But he's also partially right. If you have a, let's say your muscle building, general muscle building ability on a scale of one to 10 is a seven, it's probably around a seven for your whole body. It wouldn't make sense that it's a seven for your whole body and then, oh, your, your glutes, it's a fucking three mm-hmm. or a two. That doesn't make any sense unless you start to understand that perhaps you have a poor connection to that muscle right. and that's why it's a three. And what he said, which was very fascinating, he says one thing you'll notice is all like weak body parts, they have a very tough time being strong in their most shortened position or most contracted position. And I thought of that. I thought of that real hard after that podcast because I know what my weak body parts are, what my body parts don't which body parts I have that don't respond as well as my, my my other body parts. One of them is my chest. My chest doesn't respond as well as my delts do. And I thought, hmm, how do I feel in its most shortened, contracted position fighting against resistance? And I actually tested it at the gym, and I sure as fuck found that, yeah, I do see that I lack connection or strength in that most shortened position. So muscle connection in the short, shortened position is a great way, excuse me, training yourself in that shortened position or learning how to connect in that shortened position is a great way to connect to that muscle. So figure out what it is to shorten, to get that muscle in a shortened position and then try to contract it as hard as you can. This is where in that these, position, you'll feel it. This is where uh, an old school bodybuilding technique, and I used to implement this into my training is... You know, you do these squeezes and holds at the end of a, yep. at a set. You know, yep. I'm on my fourth set of or in between reps. Yeah, chest, you know, pec deck flies or whatever like that. And the, at the last, the very end of it, I do this squeeze yeah. and hold, uh, isolation hold for you know 30 seconds or however, however long I can hold it. And all I'm really doing is mentally concentrating on squeezing my chest as hard as I can until I start to feel it bleed over into other muscles, and then I I release yeah. right. So I think too like. <laughs> somewhat important that um like uh, distinguish the difference so like uh, within training like bodybuilding so i'm isolating the reason why i have certain issues with um like machines and, and isolating muscle groups is that you know now we're we're basically turning off the rest of the body and we're we're isolating based off of like uh positioning and so now like all the forces are just you know in this one limb or this one joint versus i have to i have to intrinsically be able to stabilize and i have to be able to provide like anti-rotation and all these compensations that would happen if i don't have a machine in like 
placing me in a fixed position mm-hmm. in right. a sense. Right. So, uh, you know, like as far as like body movements, you, there's a way to do that without machines, right? You guys are talking about these techniques that, you know, it doesn't require machines, but you can have the same effect. I just find it more applicable to then building off of that and then bringing that into like a compound lifting. Well, it does. It doesn't from a functional standpoint, but if you're trying to build a muscle that you already have a poor muscle connection by you adding stabilization, anti-rotational and your, and your body weight without a machine, it's, you've just made it more complex. Definitely. You've made it more challenging. So if I have some, like, let's use Sal as an example, say Sal's a client of mine and he's just like, man, I'm just having a hard time developing my chest. I'm not as connected to it. And so I decide to do all these free weight exercises with him. Well, fuck, that's not it's that's going to be really tough for him, if, especially if he already understands how to work out. He's already created these poor recruitment patterns, adding more, more, more stuff like anti-rotational or full body His to where balance. He, or yeah, whatever. everything else. Like I'm, I'm complicating that process for him to get connected to a muscle he already has a hard time being connected. Right. So putting him in a very stable, isolated position in a machine, I see value to that, and that's where. I think that it gets neglected and probably underused by people uh, that I would 100% do. I would not put him in a in a, a compound lift where he's having right. to stabilize and do other things. I want right. him to now, do- now now this now that being said, if you're if you're training a client, your number one goal, I know they say they want to look a particular way, but your goal is to be able to get them move really well so that they don't hurt themselves. Then focus on the aesthetic type of stuff because if you don't place any focus on getting them to move better. You may end up creating a well-developed, aesthetic, injury-prone individual, which happens quite a bit. You see this quite a bit with the guy in the gym that's all you developed. See it a lot, you see it a lot with guys in the gym that are like what we would call like a, a weekend warrior bodybuilder, right? The guy who hits chest, you know, yeah. all, chest and biceps always, but, you know, misses legs every now and then, isn't doing core, isn't doing, right. right, he's hitting kind of the beach muscles all the time, like, that's really going to fuck you, and, uh-huh. if, and if you're doing all machines, but I mean, if you're if you're training like a Ben Pakulski, or like I think I was as a bodybuilder, there's not it, there's not very many muscle groups that are getting, uh, un, that are not getting touched. It's just, that you're it's not, just getting them to move all together in particular Right, work ways. synergistically yeah. together, right? I mean, that's, I, I, ideally, you got to be creating, doing something functional in there, but. Yeah. It's, you, it's, it's all valuable. It's all valuable. That's the thing, like isolation movements. Yeah. In a correctional standpoint, if I'm trying to correct an imbalance or movement, I use isolation movements quite a bit. If I'm trying to get your scapula to retract, I'm not going to put you in a, bent over barbell row to do it if you've got forward shoulder you try to get someone with forward shoulder retract and depress their scapula with a barbell row good luck right they're stabilizing their body it's a free weight no it's gonna be a bicep and low back exercise no what i do is i have them sit on a fucking chest pad supported machine or cable and i focus on get the feedback so they understand what it it. feels like first right but then you have to transition them you know it further to progress that mm-hmm. right so they internalize it so that, i guess that's the the sort of the point is it's training wheels yep well, now if you're a trainer and you have a client and you want to improve their connectivity to a muscle there's a few things you can do put them in a stable situation where there's less for them like adam was saying less for them to worry about machines and cables are great for this number two uh some uh, use a mirror many times if someone can see a muscle that they're trying to activate, they can feel it. That's why so many people have such a tough time activating the, their back muscles because they don't see them. So sometimes you could use a mirror if possible and you could tell them, see, watch your scapula pull back. Now watch. You also have to understand the function of the muscle. <coughs> so if the muscle's job is to, <coughs> excuse me, depress the scapula, well then you focus on depressing the scapula. The third thing is touch the muscle while they're moving it. So they have mm-hmm. that feedback. They can feel it. Your finger on it helps them, you know, that does activate help. it. Yeah, a lot. Like I've had a lot of clients really like, wow, I, you know, I feel a lot more responsive and just, just an external like uh, stimulus like that. A lot of times is what was neglecting because I didn't even know how to turn that on. So unless it's their glutes, yeah, the, <laughs> or inner thigh. I think it's yeah. a little weird. That you can't, do you feel this working? Yeah. <laughs> You'll get fired. Oh, we're not supposed to do that. Two. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Next question is from Prime and Glory. Do you prime your whole body before a full body workout or focus on what you will train first, then prime the next section of your body before you continue training? I wonder if we're all the same on this or different. Well, so here's the idea behind uh, effective 
priming. Now, can you prime an exercise? Yes. Can you prime your specific body? Yes. Which one is a priority? Your body. Mm. So what I mean by that is there are specific movements I can do to prime the average person for uh, a bench press, okay? But there are much more specific movements I do to prime an individual with, say, forward shoulder right. or, you know, uh, when elbow flares out. Whatever is does compensating. That's right. So the way you prime your body before your workout is specific, or at least it should be specific to your body, your personal body. Like uh, for me, one of the things that I do when I work out my body is I prime my hips. In particular, I prime my ability for my my hips to, or at least my femurs, to press out a little bit, at, especially as I descend or am I at the bottom of a squat. In other words, to activate my, my gluteus medius a little bit. And I've noticed for me, for my body, that takes away the hip pain, low back pain. It makes me feel much more stable. Is that the same priming I would do for another individual who may have a, a completely different problem? No, that may actually make them much worse. So priming, there's general priming where you can do like, you know, like general priming exercises before your workouts. And that's really, I, you know, that's super generic. It's better than nothing, but it's super genetic and like a generic, excuse me. And like anything that's super generic, it's not going to be nearly, not even close to as effective as priming your individual body based on how your body moves. This is why when we created Maps Prime, it was, uh, man, this was like three days of us racking our brains. Like, how do we design something yeah. that someone can take and then figure out their own body mm -hmm. to be able to prime? Because we knew that was the key. Like, yeah, we could have written, we could have written a prime program with like, here's how you prime before you bench. Well, here's then how you prime then before you bench. It's just a warm up, though. That's right. You know, that's so the difference. I, yeah, the difference being, like you mentioned, these these things that we we tend to catch ourselves uh, compensating towards, and uh, you have to be able to identify those first and foremost. And so, like having a quick process to be able to even identify that, you know, my shoulders don't fully retract uh, while doing this. Well, or, this is why Prime was made. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So that way, you know, you can test it and you, you, you bring that into your priming session. So yeah, for me too, it's like, you know, I need to, I need to add, you know, rubber bands. I need to adduct, you know, I need to do all these things I need to do to get a better squat session in ahead of time mm -hmm. because I know what my body's going to, you know, naturally gravitate to, to, uh, kind of fall into these, these hardwired patterns. Here's a, here's a silly, a super basic, by the way, uh, example. Let's say we have two individuals. Both of them are doing barbell squats. One, uh, the other, one person, their their glutes just don't fire the way they want when they squat. They've been squatting for a while. Their butt just isn't developing. And when you watch them squat, you can see like, okay, your glutes aren't really firing well. Mm -hmm. The other person does lots of squats. The opposite happens. They get a big old ass, but their quads just don't develop, which sometimes you see in men uh, or in bodybuilders sometimes, right? Where they're like, I don't squat because I just feel my butt. Those two people would have two completely different priming sessions. Now, yeah. super basic, super basic prescription. The person with the glute issue, I would have them prime before doing squats with maybe hip thrusts off the floor with bands around their legs so that they abduct and activate their gluteus medius and squeeze their glutes at the very top. Do a few sets of that, really activate the glutes, then go squats. Boom, you feel it in your glutes. Boom, your glutes are more active. <clears throat> the other person, I may have them do leg extensions or sissy squats or something to really feel the quads squeeze and contract so that when they then go do their squats, now they're feeling their quads fire the way they should and they're not mm -hmm. so reliant on their hips. No, I, I agree. So if you're paying attention to my Insta story right now, I've, I'm on day four of my kind of journey back and I'm sharing you know my priming exercises, my sauna and red light protocol, and then what exercises and movements I'm doing. And... The way I look at it is, especially being 36 years old, I've got a fucking ton of things that I need work on. You know, like I need ankle mobility. I need better hip mobility. I need better shoulder mobility. I'm starting to get this forward head now with all this damn phone time. Like I'm starting to see all these things about my body. Yeah, like I, being in traffic and driving. Oh, I have to compensate for that now. Right, right. Yeah, so there's, prime for there's all these things that I'm seeing that's going on with my body currently. Then I have an injury that I'm dealing with right now. So what I'll do is like I, I pick and you'll see right now there's normally two, three, four prime movements that I'm doing and I look at it like a like this sliding scale. Now in a perfect world or an off day, what I do right now, I'll spend a whole hour 
doing all these types of mobility drills and movements and and priming or what we call fortification sessions. But then when I'm actually getting ready to do a lift, right, I'm going to pick like the three biggest ones that are going to, that are making the biggest difference on me or that I need the most right now. So you see me using a lot of mace and Indian clubs right now. I'm doing my wall presses, which is just like our uh, zone one test. So I'm doing a lot of the zone one test because I'm, I'm starting to feel my rounded shoulders and forward head really bad, even to the point where I've had to regress it and, and, and get on the ground and prime it. And then I'm doing a lot of combat stretch because of my ankle and my mm-hmm. Achilles. So you know, there's a, a lot of other. I, like, I'm not doing any of my 90-90 right now. I'm not doing any of my lizard with rotation. Those are all big. Those are big nuts or bolts for me. But what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the areas that I know uh, will help me the most right now, and then I'll build upon that. Then I'll start to add more into my arsenal to where I'm starting to do these other movements. But 100%, I'm not thinking about oh, okay, I'm doing these clubs or I'm doing this wall press so I can get a, a better bench. And so now. I think I do because of that. I think because I get myself my shoulders in the right position, I think I, I get right into my bench press, and I think I have a better bench. But I'm not priming going like, I need to get the most out of my bench. I'm priming my posture because I know I'm not in really good alignment because of what I do all day long. And so I think really priming should be more about your body. Where are your biggest deviations? Where are you fucked up the most? addressing those in that order, and then, of course, applying all the other ones that could carry over into improving your bench, improving your squat. I mean, it's a good point, too, because, like, your body inevitably is going to need, like, tune-ups, right? So, like, depending on what your patterns have been established because of a change of work or, you know, environment, uh, you know, you you have to kind of assess all that, too, and that's why it's good to revisit, uh, you know, the testing process and then see kind of like how that that could have all changed a little bit oh bro it's it's i'm kind of tripping out on this right now because i've been i've lost all this muscle put on this body fat become really deconditioned where i'm at right now and then i'm now i'm coming back to moving again as far as exercise is concerned and the the 90 90 and the deep squats and doing all that stuff those were like must for me before but I actually, because of all the hard work that I put into that, I've created yeah. these really good recruitment patterns. Stronger in that now. Yeah, yeah. And, I'm, and it's comfortable. I can get right now in a, in a baby position and sit there all day, no problem. I don't feel stiff. I don't feel tight. And so something that was a staple in my priming and my, uh, and my off days and my, my mobility work has now become a secondary movement for me because I've done so much. But I have noticed that because of the, the time on the planes and the car and on the phone so much during this downtime, Oh, I'm getting forward head. I can mm-hmm. feel it. Like when mm-hmm. I go do our zone one test, fuck man, getting yeah. my neck back. Yeah. Oh man, it's been it's mm-hmm. been very very obvious to me pulling that nodule in the back yes. of your head to the wall. What a, oh, what a, what an issue that Great is. Attraction. Yes, yeah. it's, it's I've seen a major major uh, difference in that. And so sure now I have one area that's doing better, but then I noticed this. So, you know, I've completely flipped my priming on its head based off of what I think needs to be addressed the most. And I think that is the idea of maps prime was to give you guys the tools to simplify it as easy as possible. So the average person can take this test, break it up in zone one, break it up in zone two, break it up in zone three, and then give you some just actionable items for those specific areas. If you fail in those, it zones. literally is a test you need to be revisiting all the time, all the time, all I, and I, your we, body changes. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. I tell you what, if you uh, if you don't prime, if you're not priming your workouts now properly, and then you learn how to prime your body properly and do your workouts, it is uh, there is no comparison. It Game is changer. night. It is night yeah. and day, completely different in terms of the feel of your workouts, how you feel after your workouts, and how quickly you you uh, progress. It's that big of a difference. And I just took it for granted because as a personal trainer, I did it for my clients. Well, especially if you're not 19 one. years old. You know what I'm saying? If you're 19, 20, you may not, at that this point in your life, like you may not see as much of a difference. But, bro, you start pushing 30 plus, it's a game. It's it's no longer a game changer. It's just, it's a game changer and it's a necessity for me now. Now it's like I have to do these things before I train and it makes a world of a difference when I do. And if I neglect it, it makes a world of a difference. Next question is from Tim Sharon. What are the biggest misconceptions fans have about you that are not true? <laughs> that are not true. <laughs> hmm. A lot of people think Sal's really smart. Yeah, totally not true. <laughs> yeah, totally. Not. This whole time he always it's has all pre-selected yeah. information. Yeah. Justin and I get yeah. all the information for him. We provide it, then he reads it off. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, just reads it off a teleprompter. This, this whole <laughs> time you guys thought he was hella smart. Yeah. Hold on, let me uh, look it up on the internet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Here's here's one. 
there's this weird misconception that I'm not good at sports. I'm like best <laughs> athlete. <laughs> Do people actually believe that? No, that's oh, not. That's, that's, great, actually, that's yeah. actually a true one. Have that's, you, a, that's, a, that's a true one. Have you, had, have you had one? I'll go because I can think of something that was, uh, it used to bother me when we first started. I remember we talked about this on the show a long time ago. We uh, Early on, we got coined as the, was the nerd, the ego, and the, what was Justin? Oh, fuck if I know. The nerd, the ego, and... <laughs> I don't, the athlete or what did they like, call you? Hey, call me something. I don't, I don't remember. Uh, the don't other guy. Maybe it was the, yeah, the, the other guy. guy. <laughs> the quiet guy. Uh, the, other yeah, guy. Yeah, the other guy. Uh, but so, I, I, you know, so I don't know what it was, uh, what caused it. I'm sure. Um, what the, caused people to call you the ego? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I, can't, I, <laughs> I came off as this uh, egomaniac. Yeah, and it's statements like that that probably didn't help the cause, right? Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. Exactly. So. This is what happened was early on, I became known as like this egomaniac and and coined as the ego on the show. And I think that it's so ironic because it couldn't like that's this is where I this is where I'm most read. Like you want to talk about like what I'm into, like psychology, neuroscience, understanding all that stuff. Like I'm very fascinated in that topic. I pride myself on being somebody who's very self-aware. And so to coin me as like this egomaniac guy is kind of funny to me because I think it's really the opposite i believe that i'm i'm I, th- I believe i'm extremely confident and i think a lot of times confidence uh gets misunderstood or people think that it can be arrogance or can be cockiness or can be ego um but no it's not at all i've always been a very confident person and i think that was uh, a lot of people have this idea of me which is also why too a lot of times when i meet people in person they're just I think they go like, oh, you're not what I thought you were going to be like. You know, mm-hmm. I think people expect me to be kind of like this cocky, arrogant guy. And that's, so again, it couldn't be further from the truth. So, no, we, I don't think we'd work with you if you were. <laughs> yeah. No, for reals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't yeah. think any yeah. of us yeah. would, would last if we all had, you know, we had asshole egos, or like, re, like, like serious, like yeah. for real yeah. dysfunction. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. what I mean. If, it, if any of us were egomaniacs, I think, and we all are, are leaders, type A personality, but then, and, but nobody possesses that you know, unhealthy narcissism or ego, you know, egomaniac. Like none of, nobody's like that at all. I don't think mm. it would ever it work. Again, it wouldn't last. Not, right. not, not in this kind of a, right. a, 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 a So I know a, that's, that's the first one that comes to mind because it was an early one that I, I remember. I can think of me. one for, for, for mind pump. That is a misconception conception. And part of it's our fault uh, because we joke around, we laugh and all this. I think people think that we're like party maniacs. Like, I yeah, think, I feel like, yeah, I feel like fans think that like because we, we openly talk about drugs. Yeah, yeah wait, well, but, yeah, but you know, I think they, if they're like, oh, if I'm gonna hang out with Mind Pump, we're gonna fucking go crazy like you know rock stars. And it's like, no, we go to bed. I like, love can. that misconception about us, though. Yeah, yeah. I feed into that whenever yeah, a we little can. Bit, I know yeah, Sal likes it. Every uh, once in a while, we'll, we'll have like some big name guests and I'll just fire join up right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they ask if they want some, and a lot of times they freak out, or sometimes they they partake and then they they get all weird. They're all weird because yeah. they're yeah. not used to being high. No, like not our, on that our level. <laughs> Like mind pumps, like idea of you know what's funny? We have yet, let's see, three years working together. Have we like partied hard together? No, we haven't. No, never, right? No, no, no. When, yeah. when we're out somewhere and we have some free time, you know what we end up doing? Work. Watching, watching a movie on TV. Yeah, that's our, that's our like. Hey guys, guys, we got some free time tonight. What do you guys want? And to we yeah. talk about let's ideas. I was gonna say most yeah. of the time it's 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 work related stuff. We're not yeah. really partying. Yeah. that's kind of a big misconception <clears throat> of all of us. You don't uh, think there's been one uh, with mm. you? I'm trying to think right now. It used you know to what? Be, I, think, I used to get I a lot have, of- I have one for you. Okay. I think, and I think it, it feeds right into what we were talking about, the whole, the nerd, the ego, and whatever, the other guy. I think that the the whole nerd thing, I think you're not a real nerd. I think a lot of people, when you you think of nerds, that you, they attach this- Oh, like, like awkward and- Yeah, you're not no. that at all. You're somebody who, uh, yeah, exactly, an awkward, bookworm, just not this, just not somebody who's really social- you don't have hardly any traits that I think the the typical nerd would have uh, at all, and I think that people call you that or we say that about you, but I don't think that's I true. Th- well, today here's you know I, this is why I didn't say that one. I think it's because um, today the the word the the name nerd has a different it's, it's become, got a different meaning. Well, it's become it kind of cool. That's yeah, why. when we were it's kids, not a bad thing. Yeah, <laughs> when we were kids in the eighties and nineties, oh, you get wedgies and yeah, thrown a, in a, a locker. A nerd was like you did, nobody wanted to be a nerd. That was a, that was like a, a leper. Like you did not want to have. It, it, it typically meant you were socially awkward. You did something really weird, like you picked your nose or whatever. Nobody wanted to hang out with you. And then on, also, you were probably really smart. So that that was one of the other things that was part of being a nerd, right? Today, being a nerd is like you're just really smart or you're into 
you're really into something. So now they'll say you're a nerd and it's kind of become cool. So now if somebody says I'm a nerd, like if it was 1985, I'd be like, well, fuck you, man. But now I'm like, hmm. oh, cool. Thank you. You know, because it's kind of, and plus like the powerful people today that we all like think are awesome, like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs and, you know, all these guys, they were all, they're all tech nerds or whatever. And they're cool. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll got one for you. Here's a misconception. Although people know this now if they listen to the show, but in, but this was a misconception for me for a long time. People would always ask me uh, where where I got my education. This used to happen all the time. I would train clients. I would train clients. We'd be cl- they'd be my clients for like a year, and we'd have all these great conversations. Like God, so where'd you go to school? Like where'd you learn? I'd be like Santa Teresa High School. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, went to high school. Like what do you mean you didn't go to? No, I don't go anywhere. Yeah. So that used to be a misconception that I used to be embarrassed about. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. used to embarrass. That me. was a major insecurity for me for mm-hmm. a long time. But then it became a uh, superpower. Yeah, it became yeah. something that I was like. Isn't that crazy how that is? That was a of. major insecurity. That was something you and I were very similar. I was super insecure of that in my early mid twenties. Mm-hmm. But I think when you when you when that light switch goes off, that like, wait a second. I don't have to go to some university, continue to educate myself sure. and grow, right? That I don't know what what age that really that switch went off for me. And what I found too was that a lot of the my buddies, the people that I was closest to, that actually pushed through the four or six or eight years of college, when they were done, they were done. Just stop mm-hmm. learning. I got a lot of boys right now that have masters, even some PhDs, and they don't want to fucking touch a book. Well, they're I like went through periods of that, right? You know, and like the to to, to my. Kind of contribution. I uh, like, I hear you guys like bringing up books, and like, I'm so like, to me, I'm like, I've read so many fucking books, dude. Like, I, I got burnt out, you right. know, and I just, I was uninterested. I was not like, like ignited to, to learn. And, and the academic process just like totally killed that for me. And I'm just now getting um, back to that. Yeah. Just now kind of feeding it again and, and, benefiting from it but yeah man it was like i think that's a lot more slow death i think that's a lot more common than people think at least in at least in my circle like i can literally i can think of a handful of friends right now that all have you know like masters phds or just regular degrees and every one of them man every one of them are none of them are big readers and my friends that are the biggest readers are people that are self-educated that were like okay Mm -hmm pick up and they go. And and what I attribute that to is I, I bet I would feel the same way too if you forced me to go through my early 20s and late teens into school where I had to read every single day and I had to put all these... I would just be like, as an adult, I'd be like, I'm done. I did it. I don't need to do it anymore. I could see myself pushing away from that and not wanting to. So it's kind of funny how that works. Well, there's this... I can't remember. And I'm trying to look it up. There's actually a psychological term uh, to describe a process of which... I'll give you an example. Let's say you're a writer for fun. You love writing. It's like your favorite thing to do. And then you get a job and you're forced to write. You're forced to write on a schedule. Your boss is like, write this article, write this, write that. You start to dislike the thing that you used to enjoy doing because you're being forced to do it. And then you end up not liking writing. This happens to a lot of child athletes. You'll have a child who's a prodigy in gymnastics or swimming or ice skating or whatever that shows promise and loves it. And then they are forced and they compete and they push them. And then the kid at the age of 16 is like, I never want to fucking do that again. Mm -hmm. And they stop forever. There's a real psychological phenomenon here where if you're forced uh, to do something for a while, you start to fucking hate it. And this happens with education all the time. Like, like Justin said, like you you just get burnt out because you were forced because you had to, Although you love learning, obviously, right? It's like you're burnt out by it because of that that whole that that connection you've made with it. What yeah. Do you, what do you think is your your big misconception? What do you think? Uh, I was trying to think of it. Like I I I pretty much wear who I am on my sleeve. You know, it's kind of hard for me to distinguish like what the perception is of me. Uh, you know, I don't think a lot of people really know. I think who I am. You know, I don't, I I think that that might be the 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 misconception is that like people. People kind of like think I'm, I don't know, like I, I don't vocalize like my points or my opinions or, you know, as frequently for them. So it's like they don't really get as much of an insight about the way I think. I don't know. That's just me speculating. But like I, uh, for me, it's always been like, I think, I think one of the things is that, that I'm, 
I'm I'm sort of introverted and I'm quiet and all this kind of stuff, which is not the case at all. No, like, no. Like I definitely, if I'm at a party, I'm like the first one talking to everybody. Oh, that's a good. That's a that's a that's great a really point. I think yeah. I think a lot of people would think that that's not true, which is 100 percent true. We've been places before, and Justin is by far as outgoing, if not more outgoing, than any of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm comes- very 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 social. And yeah, it, but it's 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 the dynamic of like we're working for me too, and like. Um, I analyze a lot when I'm, when I'm work mode, I, I analyze the fuck out of everything. Mm. And I listen, uh, to, 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 you know, where it's going in the direction and like what your guys points are. And you guys have really good points that I'm trying to like bounce off of. And then like, I don't know, I look at it more as a team and like the flow of the conversation versus me, like trying to interject, uh, you know, all my points when it doesn't belong. Right. You know what I mean? So uh, I think that uh, people, if they understand me, it's like I'm, I'm kind of a role player in that sense, you know. Mm. Well, that's the that I think that's an attractive quality about both you guys that I I've always appreciated is that nobody in here uh, cares about being the front or the lead man or whatever. We care more about like the the conversation or the mm-hmm. interview or whatever that we're doing. We're, we care more about the audience and how they receive it than we care about our own our own personal self-worth or whatever that we're getting out of it. So, and I, I think that you exemplify that. I think you're somebody who, uh, I mean, it, and it can, I can't imagine, I couldn't imagine a, a third person with Sal and I, like you did would just get gobbled up. Mm-hmm. Be, but the fact that you don't allow that, uh, I think is amazing, and I think that it's so cool. And I don't, and I think a lot of times people think that, like, oh, you guys never let Justin get a word in, or you don't. I'm like, no, Justin is who Justin is. Like, it's, yeah, there's this no is who I am, man. right. If he wants to put his trust me, if there's a topic that we cover that he has an opinion on, he's not going to be one I'll person. Come right in. Yeah, you know I, mean? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't have any like reserve about that. Mm-hmm. It's just. I like I appreciate when you guys talk and you, you have like, you know, little debacles between the two of you. Like I sit there. It's fun for me. You know, like I like to listen to it. Like I just like the fans. I don't know. Sometimes you get a little nervous over there. Yeah. I feel nah. like, like yeah, sometimes when I'm I like, get, oh, if I get fired up enough, I can look over at you. He's going to know, he's gonna know nah. who's, whose side he's supposed to be on. <laughs> well, that's the only part where I'm like, <laughs> are they going to manipulate me again? No. To like one side versus the other. Whatever. Or, you just pick at him every time. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that, that awkward. because he's smart. He always picks the right yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The he's awkward the, YouTube moment right where now. they made me pick Sal as the closer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, "Fuck!" Are, are you a are, are you a sentimental person? I feel like you are. Yeah, but I I bury that shit. Like yeah. I don't want anybody to see that. Because but I've seen you with your kids. I don't think you bury it, bury it as yeah. good as, as well as you think well, you do. Yeah. Who's the most romantic out of the three of us? Romantic? romantic? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Sal. Sal. Huh? Probably. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I don't. You know. Here's a he funny puts thing. rubber gloves on with his tissues. <laughs> I feel like I could I could step that that part of me up a bit. You know, I don't I don't know if that's if, if that's true. You're, you're you're from what I know of you guys and of how you talk about your significant others, you're both extremely uh, romantic or res- respectful, and you speak very highly of them and openly. You hear that? So I don't know if that's the. <laughs> well, she listens to the show. I'm sure she hears you say yeah. that shit every episode. I, I I I don't know. I mean, do you? I, I think we're I think you're all we're all kind of yeah. Like no, I mean we definitely. I mean I. I definitely uh, acknowledge, you know, what my wife does for me and everything, like all day, all the time. But at the same time, like, do you I don't... tell her stuff like "You're beautiful"? I love. Are you like oh, that yeah, kind every of day? Oh, oh, yeah, all, all the time, all the time. It's just, it's just more of like a doing very specific things, you know, and like planning. I'm terrible yeah. at planning and events and and uh, oh, you know yeah. organizing things. Yeah, we all in have that, that sense, I'm, I'm horrible at that. So I feel like I don't get. Like you can't like label me as like the, the romantic, you know, because I'm not like doing picnics and shit, you know. You'll show up. Yeah, yeah, I'll show. That's me too. Be very grateful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm here. Oh, yeah. I'm the same way. Like, hey, what do you think about this, that, and the others? I'll be there. I don't know. Just remind me. Exactly. Te- text me before, so I know. <laughs> show. That's pretty much yeah. it. Let Excellent. me know about your surprise. Yeah. Check it out. Go to your app store. Get the Mind Pump Media app it's 100 free. percent free go check it out i was doing a little dive a deep dive into uh a greenfield deep dive. yeah but uh, ben greenfield's podcast the other day and what i realized is uh he has a ton i mean a lot of podcasts dealing with natural or alternative ways to cure or treat cancer which i wish i had you know years ago i had a family member who uh, was diagnosed with a uh, you know terminal cancer and um, you know she didn't make it or whatever and I was just scouring the internet for information and many times when you're in that situation you know you have your doctors helping you 
but then you go online and you try to you know read information on this and it's difficult to sift through it because there's so much stuff that's out there but the thing about Ben that I like is Ben um, Ben has a lot of integrity he's a very smart dude and he has introduced us to phenomenal guests because he's got that he's got a great you know he, he sifts through it a lot himself and mm -hmm. As I'm going through his podcast, because I was on a long drive. Is that the Roger Drummer one? Uh, the recent one was a great, it was a good one. Yeah, yeah, that was a really good one with the herbologist. I like. About. I just like how Ben the way Ben uh, interviews, especially with like really intelligent minds like that. The the questions that he peers in into on these people, I think, are, is incredible. In yeah, itself. he extracts a lot of valuable information out of these people. Absolutely, and it, Ben Ben's podcast is one of the few podcasts that I consistently recommend to people and our audience that goes and listens to it. And that's not just because he's a good friend of ours. I mean, he is a no, good No, he's got a good ours. podcast. Right. He's got a very, very good podcast. It's uh, great information, good entertainment. Ben's been doing podcasting for a long time. He's also the guy that I want to hear give me information to because after you get to know him and you meet him, mm -hmm. this dude fucking lives health and fitness. He, I, I, feel, I always he feel, applies it. I feel guilty every time I see him. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> Here, I, I'm supposed to be this health expert and I see the way this guy, and he lives it at a next level. And so he's the person who I want to ask those hard questions on, especially when you're talking about like Chinese medicine, because yeah. there's so many, there's so many people that when they present it, it comes off very woo woo. Mm -hmm. right. And Ben has mm -hmm. a very scientific approach about everything that he does. So it's incredible to listen to him dive into some of these woo woo type of people. No, it's uh, I tell you what, uh, if you like mind pump and you want more good information, the podcast to check out besides ours is the Ben Greenfield Fitness Podcast, 100%. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. <laughs>